Good morning. Thank you very much for the speech. Uh, I, I learned a lot from another tradition. I'm a Christian, but I'm from the culture of interreligious Confucianism, Buddhism, Taoism, Shamanism. Uh, now I am uh, the Christian. So I'm going to talk about uh, the healing uh, from the perspective of Christian, uh, the Bible. Uh, uh, as uh, um, the scripture in healing, healing means already uh, that you mentioned that healing implies that there's a something damage, you said damage, that means that there's a, some suffering, some pain, uh, or sickness, not right. So we say that uh, the human predicament, I'm also teaching Pastor Kerry Kelsey, so we say that human predicament. And every religion is dealing with uh, that, uh, the brokenness, the human, the suffering, and salvation, uh, or we say that on the healing. The human uh, suffering is still um, uh, the mystery. Even though we try, we human beings try to explain. There's many, many theories and theologies, and many religions. Even within our Christianity, there's so many uh, theologies, many different explanations. But still, we have to say that human suffering it is a mystery. We do not know exactly why that happened. And I will not pretend that I have all the answers. I'll try my best. And the first, the first question is, why do we, why do we suffer? Uh, for example, today's uh, the theme is healing, so that I change. Why do we people they get sick or ill? There are several other answers, tentative, tentative answers in the Bible, so I want to introduce. The first one is, I introduced this as uh, the question. There's more questions than answers probably in our search. Is this suffering from my own actions, like wrong choices, so that I simply endure the consequences of my wrong choices? Or second, is this suffering the result of God's anger or punishment uh, over my wrong choices? This is, is the Bible that Jesus healed a man who had been an invalid for 38 years on the day of Sabbath. Then Jesus said, stop sinning and something wrong may happen to you. The uh, third one is, is this suffering a way for God to discipline us, uh, to teach us something valuable and thus, uh, thus to strengthen our faith? Here's the Bible, uh, the quotation. Three times I pleaded uh, with the Lord, it is St. Paul, uh, pleaded the Lord to take it away from me. But God said to me, my grace, the God's grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So there's no healing or curing. The four is, is this a suffering for the glory of God? Is in the Bible. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So it is a mystery. Uh, there's many. These are, um, as a uh, the carer, I do not use some biblical passages, of course, is that, okay, well, what have you done? Or is that the God's anger? Or, but we have to be honest that it is in the Bible, uh, depending on the context, that we have to be very wise to use this one. But still, the suffering is, is a mystery. There's no uh, very exact, uh, the precise explanation why we have to suffer. But the healing is the theme that runs throughout the Christian Bible. Um, the Christians were created in the image of God, uh, the Genesis chapter 1 and 2, just 1 and 2. And then we fell or sinned in chapter 3. 1, 2, 3. And that's it. And then the rest of the Bible is all about healing with the salvation. Uh, it's like uh, the God always chasing us that um, 
uh, my promise, I'll heal you, I'll save you. This is uh, uh, 66 books that compare to three chapters, very short. And also Jesus, uh, the God said, I am the Lord who heals you, the Exodus 15, um, verse 26. And also Jesus healed many, many sick people, the lame, the blind, the cripples, the mute, and many mentally ill, so-called the demon possessed. I mean, in that time, they understand that why they suffer um, the mental illness, the demon possessed, they understand that. The next question is that why isn't everyone healed when everybody pray to God for healing? Uh, the both the mental and uh, the physical, uh, the sickness. So let's uh, think about a little bit about what's your definition of healing. Okay, here I suggest one. Health is a state of a complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And I add emotional well-being also, body, soul, uh, or mind, and spirit. So health as the absence of disease or infirmity is a medical model. So we sometimes misunderstand that. Uh, okay, healing means the medical model, depending on medical model, is curing. So what's the difference between curing and healing in our contemporary society? So I said the healing means a holistic meaning, more balance between physical, uh, spiritual, and emotional. But the curing is that we just go back to our previous function, this medical model. So I often experience that the word of the Bible has the power of healing, not curing. Um, as a pastor here, or the chaplain, or the counselor, I, uh, I, I do not go to those people who are the sick, not as a cure. I, can, I don't have some... Sometimes it may happen when we pray together, still is that there's a miracle. But often I go there to help them to heal, not cure. So I just want to share two cases that I use as just a human being, how I used uh, the Bible as the Henry suggested. And uh, the, before that, Jesus said to the healed daughter, your faith has healed you. Often Jesus said that. Go, your faith has healed you. It's your faith. So that do you know this interaction, the faith and also God's word, as God's power and faith together, and then boom, as the miracle. So I uh, the worked uh, as a chaplain in a hospital. I was on call over uh, the night. I was the only one chaplain in the entire big hospital. So around the midnight, I was beat. It was my colleague, American colleague, who was working in another nearby hospital facility. She said that she was helping a Korean woman who had just lost her 13 year son because of a car accident, a school car accident in the morning. And then the mother rushed into the emergency room and saw her son lying down there. And then after that, she sat alone in a separate room, dark room, and did not talk at all, isolated herself, and just to, uh, sitting there. And uh, the, my colleague tried to help, and tried to have a conversation, and nothing, nothing helps. And no emotion on at all in her face. Just sitting in a dark room alone at long, long uh, the hours. So my colleague, uh, the American colleague, was very concerned about that and called me and please come and help us. So I uh, went there and um, I saw what my colleague meant. Uh, no communication was possible, so I just sat first in the room um, with her, just asking for the, um, the her uh, the permission. Is that okay? I sit in this room with you, and then we did not have any conversation. Actually, he um, that she uh, did not the care. Um, I was there. So after a long while, she shortly lifted her face and looked at, and then that's all. And then another silence in the dark, and we sat together. And uh, but, uh, she moved on her face and looked at me. Uh, probably it's just reflect. Uh, the, uh, the, so I captured the moment and carefully said that 
uh, we are concerned about you. Uh, can you tell me what's going on with you? And another long silence, no answer. But eventually, anyway, we began to exchange a word or two and short sentences. And um, here is the story she told me. She felt the responsibility of her son's death. She committed a sin. So I said, what kind of sin? She fell in love with a man, but not her husband. But there was not sexual relationship between them, just emotional, uh, the love affair. And she was a faithful Christian. So I intuitively sensed that what was going on, because I understand the culture, and the Christian culture, and Korean culture, and the family, and the relationship, husband and wife. So I did not say anything, I did, but I did not see what's the, the very direct and uh, the relationship between these two, uh, the incidents. But I did not say anything and did not try to persuade or even argue with her. Uh, there might be no connection between these two things. We just sit, sat in silence again for a long time. She finally opened her mouth and they shared her feelings with the other, I mean with me, and she needs time to process this uh, in a kind of confession. So I uh, intuitively, I decided to go into her, uh, the framework, her framework, not my framework, and then find a way to get out of that that lock, help her. Uh, she was in shock and overwhelmed me, guilty feeling. So I said that, okay, uh, do you want me to pray? Let's pray together. So I prayed uh, the, for her, and in the last sentence, I quoted the biblical verse that, uh, Probably many of you are very familiar. Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? Jesus said, Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was uh, left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Jesus said to woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and see no more. Even though I did not see any very clear connection between these two, I just went into her framework and then she made a confession and then intuitively I said that, okay, she may be free, some kind of burden. The impact of this sharing was marvelous. I was shocked, I was surprised by her change. She lifted her face and began to talk more. It's like a lot a life. So this impact, um, I saw that the power of the Bible. But I have another short instance that I'm not sure I have. <laughs> okay, I'll share very briefly this one. I was on call again. I was called by a nurse. There was a request of a chaplain's visit from a female patient. I went upstairs. The patient was in her 50s. Her eyes were red and looked extremely anxious and tired. And she told me that she had not slept at all for the last three or four nights. I sat with her and asked what were on her mind. She shared that she felt abandoned by God and was feeling so alone and could not sleep at all a week. Well, I did not try to cheer her up or persuade that God is always with you or trust God. Silent. Instead, I asked her if it is okay I share some biblical passages with her. She said yes. So I read, uh, read from Psalm 22. Jesus, um, in his last moment, could this passage when he cried, oh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is Matthew, but um, I uh, read Psalm 22, the original. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, and I'm not silent. And there was a long psalm. I read all of them. In the middle of my reading, she began to sleep. When I finished the reading, I sat there for a while, and then, without waking her up, I walked tittered uh, toward the door, and finally she awoke and said that, I'm glad you're here. So that this is the power of the Bible I witnessed. Thank you. Thank you.